Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to talk more about making FUI elements in Nodebox. So before we get started, if you're unfamiliar with Nodebox, you should check out the last tutorial I did on it. It's number 167. All right, so this thing that we're going to be building is an audio spectrum kind of graph thing. And this thing animates from 0 to 100. I'm just going to drag it down so you kind of get an idea of what happens. At zero, it's a little unusable, but if you feather it in, it should be okay. Unless you want this like weird digital eye thing, which is kind of neat. So let's set this back to 100, because that's about where all our data is supposed to end up. I used an iOS app that did spectral analysis on audio, and it gave me a CSV, which I cleaned up and brought into here. But this could be pretty much any kind of CSV data. So we bring that in. That's a whistle. And this is a little bit more interesting, so let's move forward with that. So if we click up here at the very first node, we have an ellipse. And right now, it's really just set to 1, 1, so you don't see anything. But if I made this bigger, you would see it. So undo that. And we're going to resample the outside of that by amount. And we're going to use 100 points. So we're going to 100 points around that circle. So then we feed that into this point node, and we have 100 points. And again, you can't see it unless I really zoom in on this thing. But we can see it in the data here. We have from 0 to 99. So the basic idea is we're going to take the CSV of points and we're going to map them around the circle and then we're going to extrude them out from the circle by the amplitude of the sound itself at whatever frequency it is around the circle. So this coordinates node basically lets us take a point and its position and move it out by a distance on an angle. So to do that, we have to figure out which angle each of these points is at and then what distance we're going to move it out by. So first, let's tackle the angle. So if you can see up here, we're passing this point data into this count node. And that's just in case I want to change the count of the points around the circle. Although I haven't tested that yet, so hopefully that works and doesn't make me look stupid. Anyway, then we're going to take that count and we're going to put it in this divide null. So this number here is 360. So we're going to take 360 divided by 100, and that's going to give us a step for a range. So this range is going to build a circle basically from 0 to 360 degrees, and it's going to use that step. So the step will be 3.6. If we click on here, you can see that. So each one of these dots around this circle is 3.6 degrees off of each other. So we're going to take that angle and we're going to feed it into our coordinates. So we have our angles for the coordinates to push each one of these things out. And the other thing we're doing there is distance. If I take this off of here, you can actually just click that. You can see how that works. It just pushes everything out by those angles. Let's undo. So to calculate how far each one of these things moves out, we have to go back to our CSV up here. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm taking this CSV, which has 8,192 points of data. I actually double click on this. You can see them all in here in the data. It goes on a long way. We only have 100 points. So what we're going to do is we're going to take every whatever number of points that we need to take just to end up with 100. So we have an approximation of our entire data range. So I'm going to take that number, make it the count of it, 8,192. We're going to divide that by the number of points on our ellipse. So this point over here, which is 100. So 8,192 divided by 100 gives us 81.92. And we're going to pass that into this n parameter, which basically is take every nth value out of this original CSV. So that CSV is being pumped back into here. And we're taking every probably 81 or probably 80, every 82nd one because this is an integer. Over that large of a data set, it should average out. Like instead of 164, the next one might be the 163rd one. Either way, at this point, we end up with 0 to 99. So we have 100 points of data. So then I have these two lookups. And the first one is going to look up the Y value. So in this data set, the X value is the frequency, and the Y value is the amplitude. You can see they're very small numbers. So we're going to use this lookup to grab the Y key, so that all we get is the Y values. And then we're going to pass them into this convert node. And annoyingly, we can't really see what these values are, but they're like 0. 0.00001 and 0. 0.0001. If you look back here, you can see in the data, it's like 1 times 10 to the negative fourth. So there's a period and three zeros in front of this thing. So I kind of try to approximate that with this convert node. And then from there, we're just going to set our new range to be 50 to 500. I don't want anything to be at zero. So our base is basically 50, and the highest points will be 500. And then those are multiplied through this frame setup, which here we take the frame number, and then we multiply that by 0 0.01 so that it slows down the animation. And then we multiply that converted number by our frame number that's been converted as well. 
And then we pass that into the distance parameter of our coordinates. So if I click on this, and we go back in here, you can see as I move this out in time, the distance gets farther. I was trying something else out earlier where I would make a shape based on this, so that's why I have this sort here, but you shouldn't need that to build this. And then we pass those coordinates into a line node, and that just draws a line here from zero to the coordinate value. Then we pass that into colorize, and I have this colorize set to make our strokes a little thinner, and then that's passed into a combine. So then the only other thing is the numbers that are at the end in the original. And for that, it's basically just the number of the frequency. So back to this lookup over here, instead of taking the Y value, now we're taking the X value. And these are all floating point numbers. So we convert them to integers, and then we pass them into this text path. And then its position, instead of using the original coordinates that pushed everything out, we take that coordinates, we pass in the angle parameter again so that we have all the angles that match up. Because without that angle parameter, all the things will move in one direction. So if I take this off here, you'll see if we do distance now, it'll all move zero, so to the right. So if I undo that, we pass back in this angle parameter, and then for every range that we have in here, each one of these points will then move out on that angle instead, so that if I wanted to make them go further away, I could, or whatever. So now these text pieces are 10 points away from the end of the line, so you can see there's a little gap in there. We get closer, you can see it. At this small size, there's no real way to make these things not overlap, unfortunately. But I mean, that's going to be so tiny, you wouldn't see it anyway. So let's zoom back out and move it around. And you can see how they separate. And that's pretty much it. You just render out 100 frames and you're all good to go. Then you have one element built, change out your data, make another cough or another whistle or a sneeze or something, who knows? And then you're all set. And that's pretty much it. If you're used to working on like After Effects, something like that, Nodebox is kind of a nice little vacation so that you can make different elements. You can then bring back into After Effects and use them in different ways. Perhaps the next tutorial I do will be something along those lines. Anyway, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. Make sure to subscribe because we do a video every week. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure to keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I'm Joe. We'll see you next week. Bye.